<laughs> and Sandy Sodchuk is here from the UW School of Veterinary Medicine. If you have a question for Sandy, the number to call is 270-9933. Hi, Sandy. Hi. No nice seals at the vet school. No, well, we do have a very active special species service that uh, one of the few veter groups of veterinarians that actually are um, aborted in zoological medicine. Really? So, Interesting. And so they spend a lot of time at the Milwaukee Zoo. They, um, uh, you know, we see all kinds of critters coming and going. So, yeah, and they work right down the hall for me. So I hear the calls and I'm like, what is that? <laughs> you know? yeah. Interesting. All right, let's yeah. get to the phones. We'll start with Rich in Partyville. Hi, Rich. Hello. Hi, what's your question? Uh, we have a Chihuahua Terrier mix who has long black claw claws. And we don't know how far back you can cut them without hitting the vein. Oh. That we is, can't see. Yeah, yeah that is nails. really, really difficult. And sometimes you just have to take little bits off at a time until you start seeing something that almost looks like the end of your finger, which would be the quick bulging out before you hit it. Um, you have to have, obviously, a dog that's going to sit still for this. Sometimes it works if they're just lightly pigmented, not totally black. You can take a very bright flashlight and shine it through. It would be like shining a light through the end of your finger. You can see where the blood supply is and where to avoid. The other thing I like to do with dark nails is actually using a grinder, something like a Dremel tool that has a sanding disc on the end. The little sandpaper wheels work wonderful on nails. Oh, that's idea. a great yeah. idea. And, but you got to get the dog used to that buzzing sound. Mm -hmm. They do make some commercially for pets. They don't work very well. And mm -hmm. I think your best bet is to actually get one the of the... Store. Yeah, go to the hardware store and get one of those little grinding tools, little portable ones. Good great idea. advice. Yeah. Let's go to Jody in Stoughton. Hi, Jody. What's your question? Um, hi, yes, I have a male 14 month old kitten that does not want to use the kitty litter. Uh oh. Oh my goodness. Well, this would be always something that you want to go to the veterinarian and make sure that your pet does not have any medical reasons for this. I have to assume that he's neutered because if he isn't and he's 14 months old, then we've got that issue of him being, you know, probably those male hormones are brewing and he may be not using the litter box because he wants to spray. But I'm just going to kind of run down the very, like, quickly, the things that we do when we want to have a cat have the golden toilet, as I like to call it. You need to have a litter box for every cat in the household plus one. So if you've got one cat, you need at least two litter boxes. Make sure that they're in two separate locations, not near where they eat, and not near really busy places, and not near any like, equipment like furnaces or water softeners that may make noise and bother your cat. The other thing that you want to do is make sure that it's large enough for your cat. It should be one and a half times the length of the cat from head to rear end. And so as the cat grows, obviously the litter box has to grow. And instead of buying a litter box, don't tell the pet stores this, just go and get some of those plastic storage bins, throw the lid out, and that works perfectly. You know the ones that are about mm -hmm. that tall? Yeah. They're all big enough and they work really well. Clean the box daily too. How often do you want to use a bathroom that hasn't been cleaned? You could, know? It, could it be the type of litter that it, the it kitty doesn't be. like? Most cats really like that soft, scoopable, sandy litter, which makes it easier to keep it clean as well. Okay. So, yeah. All right, let's go to Jay in Madison. Hi, Jay. Hi, how you doing? Uh, this is Sandy, the English Bulldog uh, Whisperer. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah you, got the, you got the expert here. Yeah. Okay, good. I've seen you a couple of times with uh, a couple of my Bulldogs, but I have an interesting question. I'm curious to see what you may think. I have a six-year-old male English Bulldog that ever since he was a puppy, he never would drink out of the water dish. Huh. He only drinks out of the faucet in the shower. Weird. <laughs> yeah, I went yeah we, we see a lot of cats that do this, but that's no the water. first dog I've no ever heard. Wood fudge. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. What do you have in mind? Well, a couple of things. One, he may like running water, and they do make those water fountains for dogs that are a dish where it circulates and it kind of drips down. There's several styles that are available, some that you can actually make it drip, so it's like a, a shower dripping, um, others that flow like a waterfall. So you have to look at what works best for your dog and uh, that you know see if that would work for them. So um, I, maybe his tags got caught on it, or when he's got his head down because he's a bulldog, has a hard time breathing and swallowing at the same time with water. So, you know, look at maybe elevating the water bowl, getting one of those fountains, and hopefully that'll work. Great idea. The, I know. Ups the upside of that is you're not slobbering all that bulldog <laughs> it's all water. You're in the shower. shower. <laughs> <I know. laughs> We're going to go to line one here, Susan. Ida in Janesville. Hi, Ida. Hi. Hi, what's your question? I have a male cat that is 
probably about 14 years old, and he's never done this before, but he is starting to spray around in the house. Yeah, this sounds like a broken record, but take him in and have him looked at. I've seen a number of cats that get into their teens that develop a medical condition called hyperthyroidism, where their thyroid gland becomes overactive, makes them very metabolically stressed, and they may start urinating and spraying around the house. But any, it can start any time in a cat's life, and it's usually the presence of other cats, either outside or inside, that are stressing your cat. But get him looked at medically. He's got a, there's a high chance that he's probably got some medical issue that's causing him to want to start urine marking. And we were talking about the thunder at the top of the show here and the, this drug that you Yeah, prescribed. I absolutely love Celio, which is dexmedic... S-I-L-E-O, and it comes in a syringe. It's dexmedetomidine transmucosal gel, um, and it works really well. I mean, I got up at 1.30 in the morning, gave it to Bruce, and was able to sleep through the rest of the night it's, peacefully. It's just a gel that goes on the gums. Yeah, on the gums, yeah. And uh, it runs about $15 a tube or so, and uh, you probably, depending on the size of the dog, get okay. you know, multiple treatments from it. And so. it's been working for the news hounds, yeah. right? It well, has. just well, I guess you yeah. could care less. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we're out of time. Thanks for everyone for calling in. Thanks for coming hey, in. Hey, you're Good to welcome. see you, Sandy. Well, Nice to see we'll you see too. you soon.